Good Monday morning, everyone. I welcome you to morning prayer and devotion. I know that the vast majority of you who take part in this uh, time of prayer and devotion each weekday are in the path of this winter storm, and I trust that you are safe and warm this morning because it is certainly frigidly cold outside. But I'm thankful that you took this uh, time to join with me. Maybe you've got a cup of coffee there and uh, you're settling in for this special time together. And I so appreciate you being a part of this with me each day. In our um, praise reports this morning, uh, Sister Marsha wants to thank the team for praying for her Friday. She says the dizziness left and has not returned. So we give the Lord thanks for that report today. Sister Tara Vaughn's carpal tunnel surgery went well. And also Jennifer Sokolowski reports that her niece Allison is improving, although she does still need our prayers. As you'll remember, she is recovering from a stroke due to cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, and this has led to a lot of other things, of course. In these long-term situations, most people will battle with some a degree of depression. So let's continue to hold up Allison today as well as these others who need prayers for continued recovery. Johnny Ray Hagee recovering from a car accident. Willow recovering from a heart procedure. Sylvia Larimore's daughter, Nick Cersei, uh, who continues to recover from stroke and is also battling with depression. Karen Pratt's mother, uh, Gerald Yeely, Linda Brown, Brent Moore's mother, Shirley Garner, all recovering from uh, broken bones, with the exception of Gerald, who is recovering from a traumatic brain injury. Our COVID-19 request this morning, Don Bowie, Gary and Donna M, Catherine, Sister Dorothy Cook, Brother Erickson, and Andy Burnett. And also, let's remember uh, Bruce Appleton today who uh, reported late last night that he is home from the hospital but is having to use oxygen after he has battled with COVID himself. Let's keep praying for the nursing home residents and shut-ins and pray protection today for uh, those working in our school systems. Of course, around here, the schools are shut down today uh, and probably will be for the whole week. Um, but let's remember all those who are working in school systems across the nation under very different circumstances than they were a year ago today. And let's pray for God's protection for each of them from the spread of COVID as well. We need to pray for continued recovery from this pandemic. Pray that God would give wisdom uh, to our leaders to make right decisions, decisions that are for the good of, of our nation. Hannah has been awaiting further testing to confirm or deny the presence of cancer and to determine the severity of that. So let's pray for her this morning or continue to pray. Brother Kirk has to go through chemotherapy as a follow-up to his recent cancer surgery. Edie Percival is going through chemo and she also is dealing with the recent loss of her husband. Let's keep praying for Diane Escher, Versi Gibbs, Ari Bowers, Wanda Barnes, Robert Wicks, Josh Soberg, John Fitzgerald, Lisa Workman, Evelyn Marshall, Brother Steve Williford, Claire, Michael Boland, Phyllis Robinette, David Harris, Brother Anthony Trimble, Kim Stinson, Linda Fox, Dwayne Lewis, a friend of Terry Adams, Marsha Moore's family member, Christy Smith, Lorelei, Jenna, Tucker, and Delbert this morning. All of these who have been battling cancer and of course, we're thankful that we heard recently that my uncle Delbert uh, has been declared cancer free and is simply finishing up um, his last round of chemo this week as a precautionary measure. So that is so wonderful to hear that uh, good report today. Other physical needs we're praying about, Bonnie Pulaski, Roxanne Carson, Annette, Terry Adams' grandson, all have health issues. Michelle Walker's grandpa, Gerald Hudson, is in St. Luke's Hospital in St. Louis and will be undergoing heart surgery. Marsha Moore, Terry Adams, and Michael Parrott have chronic stomach issues. 
Uh, Michael also needs prayers for his back. He heard it at work recently and is looking at having to have an MRI because it's not been showing any improvement. Cheryl Lachance has chronic liver and stomach issues. Britt Moore and James Graham have back problems. Tim Workman and Emily Stanley have diabetes. Tim Workman also suffers with Parkinson's, as do Beulah Ziegler, Russ, and my father, Ron Bryant. Rue is preparing for yet another transplant surgery. Sister Mara Sullivan has an autoimmune disease. Robbie Northup and Kendra Ortiz are battling with COPD. Elder brother and sister Perkins need prayers for healing, strength, and encouragement. Pam Wilcox has had complications after a recent surgery with fluid buildup on her lungs. My uncle Leslie Pride suffered with dementia. Pastor Marty DeLott is battling with MS. We have several children on our list this morning. Sally Waller's granddaughter, Magnolia, Abel Ray, Sophia, and Abram Page all need our prayers this morning. Baby Elsie recovering from recent heart surgery. We need to continue to pray for her. Bobby Larmy has a blocked artery at the base of his brain. Debbie Biddick's friend Shirley and Charlotte Kincaid both have kidney issues. Catherine's neighbor Jason is in serious condition, and I believe it's um, I believe it's a heart issue, but he's been in the hospital for a few weeks now. Brent Smith, Everett Hart, and missionary Robin Schutz's father all have heart problems. Renee has hip and knee problems. Donna Luttrell, Del Sifford, Pastor Del Holman's mother, and James Weininger have struggled with post-COVID issues. Jen Marlin needs healing of dystonia. Kelly needs healing of a, of a severe staph infection. Karen Pratt's father has an aneurysm in his aorta. We also have some who are dealing with uh, pregnancy issues. Austin Alyssa's unborn child has a heart defect that they've been told will require surgery as soon as the child is born. We need to pray for Mindy and for Sally's daughters today who are going through pregnancy, praying for safe deliveries for them. And also Matt and Michaela are trying to start a family and need our continued prayers. Those who are dealing with family issues today include Debbie Biddick's daughters, Jessica and Jamie, uh, Marsha Moore, uh, Angela Schweitzer, Mindy, Cheryl Lachance and her family, Annette and Dave who are struggling with some marital issues, and Grace's best friend's parents are going through a divorce. So let's remember all these family issues as well as our spiritual needs today, including Josiah, Barbara Owens, Haley, Evie, Rose, Carl, and Connor, Art Chandler, Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Mark and Caitlin, Mingo Job Corps, current students and alumni, Judy and Mike Williams' daughter, Jennifer, Judy's brother, Louis Medlin, Carmen's daughter, Grace, Lori Arbo's mother, Debbie's daughter, Jamie and family, as well as Debbie's niece, Terry Adams' children, Sylvia's family, Tasha's husband and Tasha's sister, Michelle Clark and family, Caroline Sexton's family, Pam Pulliam's children, Peggy Fiedler and her family, and Sister Beulah's family. In our other needs this morning, let's keep praying for all who are struggling with their mental health and with emotional issues at this time. Let's pray for Nathan who's battling depression. Let's keep praying for Elizabeth Riggins' son, Patrick. There is a miracle that's in the works there, and we thank God for the signs that we have witnessed recently uh, in his life. Pastor Mark Tipton is ministering to the homeless. We keep praying for him, for Phil and Karen Sampson, who need a miracle in their finances and need direction for their life. And also, brother and sister Woody uh, ask prayer for their family for comfort, healing, and restoration. I'm thankful for each of you watching with us this morning. I can see some of your names popping up here. Sister Pam, Sister Marcia, Judy, Penny, good to see you this morning. Carmen, Nelsie, good to have you watching with us today. And we're just so thankful for each one of you that are part of this prayer ministry and what an important ministry that it is. I want to talk to you this week um, about the subject of worship. We're going to take a fresh look at the subject of worship, because it ties right into this very important ministry of prayer. You cannot be an effective 
prayer warrior unless you are a worshiper of God. And I'll talk to you about that a little more maybe uh, tomorrow morning. But this morning, let's um, uh, look at this subject. We're going to be reading from Psalm 100 in just a moment. But let's define worship first of all. You know, what is worship? Well, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, worship is defined this way, to honor or show reverence for as a divine being or supernatural power, to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. Now, in Christian circles, the word worship is pretty much tacked on to everything. Uh, we use it to describe an event that we're going to attend or the music portion of a church service. We may use the word to explain what kind of song we're listening to or even the type of pastoral role that someone holds on a church staff. And it's not that those are incorrect, but they just don't represent the whole picture because worship is not about music, instruments, or an event. It's not about a type of song or a job description. It's much more than that. Worship is a heart posture, and the truth is we are the instrument. We are the instrument of worship. You know, yesterday our entire service centered around the subject of worship, and uh, my son Reagan preached the message yesterday, and uh, it's centered around the subject of worship. But I noticed that we started the service yesterday. We sang the entire first song after coming out of pre-service prayer, with no music. It was just our voices lifted up to God. And we closed the service the same way. It wasn't planned that way, but it just so happened that spontaneously we began to sing a chorus. And uh, there was just something beautiful about it because not that we don't need the music. I'm not saying that at all. I love music. But just that pure, unadulterated uh, expression with ourselves being the instrument, there was just such a beauty to it. We need to never forget that we are the instrument of worship that God most desires. The Word of God tells us that the Father seeketh such to worship Him. They that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. And in the simplest of terms, worship is simply ascribing that unspeakable value in, uh, to something and displaying substantial love for something and it can be anything and so we have to ask ourselves the question from time to time who or what are we worshiping because you see anything that we elevate to a place of priority that would that would uh, knock God down a notch or two then becomes an idol God becomes an object of worship in our lives that is displeasing to the Lord we know that idolatry is a um an abomination to the Lord, something that he detests, something that he hates. So I want to read to you Psalm 100 because it reveals so much to us about worship. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. If you want to know what or who you're worshiping today, what is it in your life that you serve with gladness? You can worship your career. You can worship a sports team. You can worship a hobby. And what is it in your life that there is gladness with which you approach? If we do not approach our uh, service to God with a gladness of heart, then we cannot say that we are truly worshipers of God if we then ascribe great affection to other things but not to our service of Him. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Who or what do you purpose to know, to have knowledge of? What do you acknowledge as important in your personal development in your life? That's a key to understanding what or who you're worshiping. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. With whom or what do you seek audience? What are you trying to enter into today? What is your goal for this day? And when we answer those questions, we can begin to see if we truly are centering our worship around 
the one true and living God. We need to remember that he's a good God. The verse uh, number five tells us his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I want to be a worshiper of God. I want my primary focus to be upon my service of him today. And if that is our heart posture, I can assure you we will have no problem with getting into his presence in prayer if we desire the things that he desires, if we love the things that he loves, and our affections are set up on things above and not the things beneath, amen, we're going to see God do great things through our prayers. Tomorrow, I want to talk to you more about the access that we have uh, through to God through the power of worship, and I trust that'll be a blessing to you. But let's go to prayer right now and save that for another day, and let's just ask the Lord to move in these needs today. Let's go ahead and enter into his gates right now with thanksgiving. Let's enter his course with praise this morning. Lord, we love and worship you today. We're so thankful that we can feel your presence, that we can come before you today, that we can have audience with you, that we can hear your voice speaking back to us, and we can spend special moment of communion with you this morning. Lord, you are so worthy. We are so unworthy, but you are our king. We are your subjects today. And we're thankful, God, that we're able to come into your throne room with boldness because you have given us that authorization today. You've given us that ability because of your shed blood and because of your love and mercy. Nothing that we've done of our own volition today except to simply make the decision to pursue you. But it's you, Lord, that are faithful, that is faithful to be there for us and to desire to work in our lives. Oh, God, we give you glory and praise this morning. We love and honor you. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're wanting your will to be done in every need and every situation this morning. And we pray your will would be done in earth as it is in heaven. We pray, God, today, Lord, for these who are continuing to recover from long-term illnesses and situations. We pray for Allison today, God. We, pray, we proclaim victory today over depression for her and for healing, Lord, of her body in the name of Jesus. We pray for Johnny Ray and Willow and Nick and Sylvia's daughter. We pray for Karen's mother today, for Gerald, for Linda Brown and for Britt's mother. We pray for Shirley Garner, Lord, for your continued healing touch for each of them. We pray for those who are battling with COVID today. We pray for Don and for Gary and Donna, for Catherine, for Sister Cook, and for Brother Erickson and Andy Burnett. We believe, Lord, for their complete healing today. We pray for those who are in the nursing homes today and those who are shut in. God, we pray your hand upon them. We pray protection for them today. We pray, God, for continued recovery from this pandemic that we've been under for the past year. We pray, Lord, today for all those who are dealing with cancer. You see Hannah today, Lord, who's awaiting test results. We pray, God, that she would have favorable test results. In Jesus' name, we pray for Brother Kirk, Lord, as he goes through chemo. God, that you would continue to touch him and strengthen him. We pray for Edie today, Lord, for Diane and Versi and Ari and Wanda and Robert. We pray for Josh and for John, for Lisa and Evelyn. We pray for Brother Williford and for Brother Trimble. We lift up Claire and Michael today. We pray for Phyllis and David and Kim and Linda Fox. We pray, God, for Dwayne Lewis and for Terry Adams' friend. We pray for Marsha Moore's family member. We lift up Christy Smith this morning, God. We believe, Lord, that you're the healer of all forms of cancer, regardless of what stage that it's in. Hallelujah, Lord. Even as you touched my Uncle Delbert with stage four cancer, and it's been declared to be in remission. You're able, God, to heal Christy today with stage four cancer of the breast and the liver. Hallelujah. You're able, God, to heal each one of these. And we trust in your power today. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing right now to each one that's afflicted. We pray for Bonnie Pulaski, Roxanne Carson, Annette, and Terry's grandson, Ethan, Lord, that their health issues are would be resolved today. We pray for Gerald Hudson, Lord, as he's in that hospital room today, that you would reach down, God, and touch his body, touch his heart right now. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for 
uh, Marsha and Terry and for Michael Parrott today for healing of their stomach issues. And you see, Lord, today Michael needing a touch for his back in Jesus' name. We pray for Cheryl today, Lord, for healing of her liver and stomach. We pray for Britt and James for healing of their back right now. We pray for Tim and for Emily, Lord, that their diabetes would be healed. We pray for Tim Workman and Beulah Ziegler and Russ and for my father this morning for healing of Parkinson's disease. We pray for Rue today, God, as he's preparing for another transplant surgery. God, that your hand would be upon him. Protect him, O oh God. We pray for Sister Sullivan, Lord, to be healed of this autoimmune disorder. We pray for Robbie and Kendra for healing of their lungs right now, for Brother and Sister Perkins to receive strength and healing for their bodies, encouragement for their spirit today. We pray today, God, for Pam Wilcox. We pray, Lord, against those complications of surgery. We pray, God, for the fluid to begin to disappear from her lungs right now. We pray for my Uncle Leslie, Lord, that you would touch his mind today. Give peace in that situation, Lord. We pray for Brother DeLott, Lord, that you would heal him of MS today. We pray that same prayer for my friend Riley March, Lord, as he battles with that same disease. We pray for baby Elsie and for Abram Page and for Sophia, for Abel Ray and for Magnolia. Lord, you see these little children, Lord, who are suffering today. And you are able, God, to minister that touch that they need. Strengthen their families, their caregivers today, God. Comfort their hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray for Bobby Larmy for healing, Lord, of his body, for Shirley and Charlotte today for healing of their kidneys. We pray for Jason in the hospital today, Lord, that he would begin to recover. We pray for Brent Smith and Everett Hart, for Sister Robin Shute's father, Lord, that you would minister healing to their hearts today. We pray for healing for Renee of her hips and knees. We pray for Donna Latrell and Del Sifford, for Pastor Del Holman's mother, and for James Weininger, Lord, as they struggle with post-COVID situations. Lord, that they would be completely healed. We pray for Bruce Appleton today, God, that his lungs would recover, that his oxygen levels would come back to normal. We pray for Jen Marlin right now, believing for her healing. We pray for Kelly, Lord, to be healed of this staph infection. And we believe for Karen's father today, Lord, that this aneurysm in his aorta would be healed. We pray for those who are going through pregnancy right now, for Mindy and for Sally's daughters. And, and we pray, God, for protection for those unborn children. We pray, God, for Austin and Alyssa's situation, Lord, with this unborn child with a heart defect that needs surgery as soon as he's born. God, we pray for healing for that child, even in the womb right now. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for all those who are dealing with family issues today. Touch Jessica and Jamie, Lord. We pray for Marcia's family. We pray for Angela's family today, for Mindy's family, for Cheryl and her family today, for Grace's friend today in this situation with her parents going through a divorce, for Annette and Dave who are struggling in their marriage, God. We believe for healing of these families today. Lord, that you would move in each and every need. We pray for those spiritual needs in our families today and among our friends and neighbors and acquaintances, God. We pray that you would reach down and minister to the needs of the heart this morning. Touch Josiah right now in Jesus' name. Touch Barbara, Lord. Move in Haley and Evie and Rose and Carl and Connor's lives. You care about these teenagers today, Lord. Give Sister Carmen wisdom in dealing with these young people, God. Help our Lord to show them your love. In Jesus' name, we pray for Art Chandler and for Marcia's children and granddaughter. We pray for Jennifer and Brenda's family. Lord, I thank you for Donnie and Brenda today, God. I pray you would strengthen and encourage them in the faith today. I pray for Mark and Caitlin. We lift up our Job Corps students and alumni. We pray for Judy and Mike's daughter, Jennifer, this morning. Lord, that you would work in her life. Draw her to yourself today by your spirit. We pray for Judy's brother, Lewis, Lord, that he would be saved. We pray for Carmen's daughter, Grace, that you would minister to her spiritual and emotional needs today. We pray for Lori's mother. Oh, God, draw her back to yourself, Lord, by your spirit to do that work that we cannot do. Go beyond those walls that are erected around her heart today. 
We pray for Debbie's daughter, Jamie, and her family. We pray for Debbie's niece. We pray for Terry's children. Lord, for every backslider today to return to you. We pray for Sylvia's family, for Tasha's husband, Adam, and for her sister, Heather. We pray for Michelle Clark and her family and so many others like them in our community today, God. We pray for Caroline Sexton and her family. We pray for Pam Pulliam's children and for Peggy Fiedler and her family. And we pray for Beulah's family, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, we pray for those who are struggling with their mental health. We pray for those who are struggling with emotional battles today. We pray for Nathan, Lord, that you would deliver his mind from depression. Oh, God, help him, Lord, to comprehend what you're doing in his life. And, Lord, to submit his heart to you. We pray for Elizabeth's son, Patrick, Lord, that you would continue to work this miracle in him. We pray for Pastor Tipton today as he ministers to the homeless community. God, be with him. Give him strength today in Jesus' name. We pray for Phil and Karen, God, that you would move in their finances. Give them direction, Lord. Give them relief today in Jesus' name. And we pray for Brother and Sister Woody's family. You see, Lord, these faithful servants of yours, God, they've lived their lives for you, God. They desire to see restoration and healing and comfort for their family today. And you see what they're going through in Jesus' name, we believe you for that healing touch. We believe you, God, to supply our needs today, and we trust in you. Hallelujah. Let your divine purpose be fulfilled in each of us this day. Help us, God, lay someone on our hearts today that we can minister to. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us, O oh God. Let our minds be transformed today. Hallelujah, as we read your word and as we marinate in your presence. Oh, God, let your work be done in us and through us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray all these things. And I pray today, God, that you would keep everyone safe, anyone that has to travel under these adverse conditions this morning. We pray, God, your hand of protection upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory and praise for all things. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me for prayer this morning. I look forward to Tuesday morning prayer and devotion so that we can do this again and look deeper into the subject of worship that we'll be talking about all throughout this week. God bless you in Jesus' name. I will see you tomorrow at 730 a.m.